Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous part, we took some general characteristic features of birds, apes or birds. Now we'll take a few more characteristic features and some examples. Birds, they are homeotherms. That means they have a mechanism by which their body temperature is maintained constant. Such animals are known as warm-blooded animals. So birds come in this category. Then when we talk of respiratory system, in case of birds, the lungs have air sacs and these air sacs, they help in double respiration. Now what exactly this double respiration is that there are certain chambers which are attached to the lungs and during inhalation the air goes into the lungs so exchange of gases takes place and while exhalation the air from the lungs comes out but from the air sacs goes into the lungs. So during inhalation as well as during exhalation there is always fresh air in the lungs for exchange. And this is known as double respiration. This double respiration because of the air sacs is very, very efficient. Plus, lungs also and along with this, <coughs> sorry, air sacs act as cooling structures for the birds. Now, if we talk about nervous system, few special features that they have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and when we talk of nervous system we can also talk of sense organs. In the middle ear there is only one ear ossicle that is stepes and when we talk of the eyes the eyes have double accommodation power. Again, there are special things which are helping the birds in the mode of life which they lead. That is, they are arboreal. They have to fly. So, they should be able to catch the glimpse of that tiniest possible uh, uh, animal or food which they want to take. So, middle ear because the hearing is not that uh, significant a sense. But vision is very, very important for these birds. So, for nervous system. Now let us talk of some special things about reproductive system. We know that the birds are oviparous. We talked about this as a flight adaptation in the previous video also that they lay eggs. If the birds were viviparous, viviparous organism carries the embryo in its body. So it would have made their body heavier. So they lay the eggs so that they don't have to carry that weight with them. But when the young ones hatch from the eggs, the young ones, they can be of two categories, needy fugus or needy colus. Needy fugus youngs are those which <coughs> start walking as soon as they hatch. Their body is covered with feathers their eyes are open so we can say that they start moving, they are little independent as soon as they are out of the egg. The example is the chick of the hen. 
So the young ones, when the chicks hatch from the eggs, they have that smooth fur around them and they start walking as soon as they come out of the egg. Just opposite, in Nidicolus, the young ones, they are without feathers, their eyelids are closed or eyes are closed and they are completely dependent on their parents because neither they can see nor they can fly. No walking is also possible. And here we take the example of sparrows. So the young ones, when the eggs hatch, the young ones of sparrow which come there absolutely naked. There are no feathers on their body. The eyelids are also fused, they are closed. So they cannot see, they are totally dependent on the parents. Whereas nidifugus, that means as soon as they are out of the egg, they are independent, they can start moving, they can start feeding. So young ones can be nidifugus or nidicolus depending upon the type of the bird. They are oviparous. Both type of eggs when they hatch, this is what we see. Now, as one more flight adaptation, we see that the right ovary and the right oviduct are vestigial. This is also a flight adaptation. Only one ovary is functional. Only one oviduct or fallopian tube is functional. So one ovary keeps producing the eggs. If by chance the left ovary which is normally the functional ovary is damaged or becomes non-functional, then only the right ovary will become functional. But normal case, in normal case, the right ovary and the right oviduct would always remain vestigial. It's going to remain non-functional. This is also an adaptation to reduce the body weight. These are some special things about birds. The study of birds is known as ornithology. And the famous Indian ornithologist who is also known as the bird man of India is Dr. Salim Ali. He has done extensive work uh, on all the varieties of birds that we find in India. Then, needology is the study of nests. And we also know that birds are called glorified reptiles. We have evidences which prove that the birds have evolved from reptiles. One such uh, evidence is Archaeopteryx, the fossil of Archaeopteryx, which shows the characteristic features of birds as well as of reptiles. And this term was given by Huxley. So Huxley called birds as glorified reptiles. These are some more important characters. Now the examples which come in this uh, class we will be talking about variety of birds like some flightless birds like ostrich, penguins, emu. We will also talk about birds which have become extinct like dodo. We will also talk about some more birds because they show some very unique characteristic features. So in the next part we will take up the examples.